to kill me, do you think? It may come as a surprise that the story Spencer most closely resembles is not The Crown, but Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. After all, the psychodrama that stars Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana in a career-best performance is all about letting go of the past and moving forward to the future. But that's a seemingly impossible task in the House of Windsor, and Spencer shines in portraying that in Diana, going beyond her icon status and getting deep on the woman who struggled in this suffocating environment. It is in this strict climate that we first meet Diana, Princess of Wales, who is late for a Christmas weekend event at one of the royal family's many estates. From the opening scene, director Pablo Lorraine frames Diana in a completely different context than the rest of the characters. Where the arrival of the guests at Sandringham is symmetrical and meticulously timed, Diana is not escorted by a security detail or a driver, but driving alone on the countryside. An oppressive Johnny Greenwood score that mixes Baroque with dissonant jazz sounds, meanwhile, creates a cacophony of rhythms and noise. Stewart is an absolute revelation as the titular Diana Spencer, giving the best performance of her career and perfectly capturing Diana's mannerisms while adapting them for her own spin on the royal. She goes from a happy woman who finds joy in small things to being haunted by the ghosts of her past and mockery of her present. Stewart compassionately portrays a woman suffering with an eating disorder, frustrated by the lack of empathy and understanding around her, while still being unafraid to go full camp with the theatrics of the role. Lorraine, meanwhile, continues to excel at finding the humanity inside the icon. Like his previous film Jackie, Spencer refuses to adhere to known conventions or formulas, instead playing with fact and fiction like you're watching a David Lynch movie. And the title of the film should tell you everything you need to know about its approach to its subject. This is not the story you know about Diana, Princess of Wales, fashion and anti-establishment icon, but about Diana Spencer the mother of two kids, the woman with simple pleasures that goes against her terrible mother-in-law and insufferable husband. Luckily, we don't have to see too much of those family members. In fact, most of the royal family isn't seen at all. Other than Stuart, the only three characters played by big-name actors are members of the house staff. There's Timothy Spall, who plays a butler obsessed with keeping everything according to plan, Sean Harris as the chef, who tries to get Diana to comply with all the norms and rules, but in a nicer way, and then there's Sally Hawkins as Maggie, the only person in the estate to actually show her some empathy and present a vision of a better future. Stand very still and smile a lot. The comparison to A Christmas Carol is no joke, and by the end of Spencer, Diana all but reaches out to us to proclaim, God bless us everyone, while the queen is left sighing and whispering bah humbug. Spencer is not as accessible a film as Jackie, even if they share many similarities. Like its subject, Spencer is messy in its narrative, jumping around, introducing dreamlike elements that don't always add up and threaten to derail it. But Stewart's phenomenal performance always keeps it grounded in the story of the woman behind the icon. They know everything. They don't. Spencer is a narratively ambitious film that remixes reality and fiction to get us inside the head of the Princess of Wales, exploring mental illness and past trauma with high camp that captures the suffering of its main character. Kristen Stewart gives a career best performance while Pablo Lorraine cements himself as a go-to director for unique and thoughtful biopics.